I've convinced myself that there's someone living in my basement. This person has finally broken the agreement and they're finally upstairs and they're gonna kill me. <laughs> Hello, you may think that the end of the year videos are done because it's January, but no, we have one more. I am going to talk to you about every book that I read and tier rank them to make it fun. <laughs> My friend Lynn does keep a spreadsheet of everything that I read and she correlates it with the videos where I talk about what I read. So if there's anything that you see on this list that looks interesting to you that you would like to see more thoughts on or get more information on, you can go to the description of this video, pull up the spreadsheet, find the book you want, and then click on the video that will give you more details about it. Lynn is amazing. Please show Lynn some love in the comments for her hard work. So I've gone through the spreadsheet. I've grabbed covers for every book that I read this year. I think, I hope I got them all. And I threw them in this tier maker and it scrambles, it randomizes the covers, but I did make the first book that we talk about, the first book that I read this year. And the last book that we're gonna talk about is the last book that I completed this year. Beyond that, there's no order or rhyme or reason to this. Tier list uh, titles, we have My Precious, that's the best of the best. We have Love, books that were amazing and I loved them. Good job, you did a good job. Good job, you've done me wrong. And then finally, Rage. Talking about this book might cause a slight rage. So those are the books, those are the categories. But before we start ranking, a shout out to today's sponsor, Wraithmarked. Wraithmarked Creative is best known for doing some incredible deluxe editions of some of the community's favorite fantasy books, including Legends and Lattes, Sword of Kaigen, and many more. And now they're working with V.E. Schwab to do illustrated deluxe editions of A Darker Shade of Magic, and they're beautiful. Schwab is the New York Times bestselling author of the Shades of Magic series as well as the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and she did a middle grade series that I really liked about ghosts and now she's working with Wraithmark Creative on the first book of her Shades of Magic series and the Kickstarter is live now. This book looks incredible. They're working with artist Ravina Kai to do the cover of the book. It has a full wrap illustration on the hardcover case. The dust jacket is going to be embossed and foiled with matching metal gilding on on the page edges and an included ribbon bookmark. And inside there's full color in sheets from Felix Ortiz, as well as a ton of interior illustrations. The book has been completely custom crafted from top to bottom, inside and outside. It's stunning. I personally wasn't the biggest fan of the Shades of Magic series, but it's popular for a reason. And I plan on picking up one of these gorgeous editions for my niece, cause I know for a fact that she's going to love it. And as the Kickstarter meets its stretch goals, more and more awesome features are going to be unlocked. The links are in the description of this video, so be sure to check it out. Thank you to Wraithmarked for sponsoring this video and thank you to you for checking them out. Back to the video. So first book on the list, cause it's the first book that I completed in 2023 is Tress of the Emerald Sea. Uh, think plain normal girl living on an island, happy with her everyday life, but then her best friend slash love is taken away and so she has to go on a, on a journey to rescue him. Pirates, nautical, but with some twists. It's in my precious. It was one of the top books of the year. It was in my top 10 list. Next we have Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, the most absurdist nonsense. That's my description for it. I reread books one and two at the end of December this year, and they didn't make it on my top list because they're a reread, but they are some of my top books. So they are going to also be at the top of the tier list. Okay, next we have some Pratchett. So this one, I think this one is my is the Light Fantastic. This is the year I discovered Terry Pratchett, and I started with um, I started with Guards Guards and then moved, and then after a couple of those books, I switched to Chronological. At the time I said, I don't understand why people are so down on Chronological, but now that I've read further Chronological, it does take a while for it to truly turn fantastic. So I actually disagree with Past Murphy and these books are not the best starting point. Start with Guards Guards. But anyway, The Color of Magic and The Light Fantastic, they're kind of two parts of the first story. Um, and I'm gonna say good job. I. Mm, I don't know, maybe love. I did kind of love them. They'll be love, but they'll probably be later on the tier list for love. Next we have Dresden. I kinda wanna review series together. So, oh, 
Since this is cut off, I don't, <laughs> I can't tell which one's which. Dresden is a wizard who is also a private detective. It starts off kind of serialized where each book he has a new case that he has to solve. Supernatural cases, when something supernatural happens, he's the one that's called. The first few books are good fun, but it <laughs> turns into something that I'm really, really enjoying. Okay, it took me a minute and it happened. Thankfully, it's cut for your sake but I got them sorted. I know how I feel about Dresden. So book one is in good job. Book two is You've Done Me Wrong. That's Full Moon. It's my least favorite so far of all of them. Book three, Great Peril is in love. I loved, I adored book three. Um, book four, shucks, I've already forgotten again. Oh yeah, book four is Summer Night. That's also in You've Done Me Wrong. Book five is back up to the four star, back up to love. That actually should be ahead of Grave Peril. Yep, I loved that one. Then book five is back to good job and book, no, sorry, book six is back to good job and book seven is in my precious. It actually made an honorable mention in my best books of the year. I loved, I loved book seven so much. So it's been a little bit, you know, highs and lows, but only two books have actually been like, ah, it, they were fine. They had good spots or they had good points, but eh. Everything else has been, I've, I've quite enjoyed myself and they're quick, they're all very short. Okay, now we have the magicians. <laughs> ah, the order, man, the order of things has been, okay. All right, well, so the magicians follows, it's, it's Harry Potter and it's Narnia. It's mostly Narnia. Falls a boy named Quentin who finds his Narnia. He steps through his doorway, he finds his magical world and then he has to go off to school to train in magic. It's very technical, it's very melancholy and Quentin is very insufferable. These books have such such mixed ratings, even among the people that I buddy read it with. The, the emotions were everywhere. I love these books, despite them being very flawed. So The Magicians, I think I would actually put in love. I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm sorry, Gabby. I'm sorry, uh, Jared and Cobb and everyone else who I've wronged, but I think it's love. Then we have, you know what? You know what? I just loved these books. They're not, <laughs> where's the other one? There it is. They are flawed. Yeah, Magician's King, they are flawed. And you you do have permission to judge me for loving them. I own that, but I just do. I just really love them. So it goes book, probably book, th no, book one. It goes book one, then book three, then book two, but they're all, they're all in love. I'm sorry, I really am. They just are. The Will of the Many. Um, hmm, I think this would be at the top of Good Job. Is that two? Maybe at the end of Love. No, I think at the top of Good Job. The Will of the Many, I'm going to put at the top of Good Job, but I'm gonna put a little asterisk there to say that I need to reread this before book two because the reception for this book has been incredible. It's on a lot of people's favorite book of the year list and I enjoyed it but I, I didn't love it. I had a good time with it. I think it's a good book, but I, it did not reach the levels for me that it reached for so many people, including my brother and my dad who both read it twice. <laughs> my brother finished it and then immediately at finish started it over and read it through again. So I admit that I must've just Maybe it was the wrong time. Maybe I read it at the wrong time. I wasn't in the right mood for it, but this is on a lot of people's favorite of the year list. So I need to give it another go. Red Seas Under Red Skies, one of my favorite books of all time. I, this was a reread, so it didn't make the top list, uh, top books of the year, but one of my favorite books of all time. The book that didn't burn, I loved this book. This too has made a lot of people's top of the year. A lot of Mark Lawrence fans are saying that it's their favorite of his and it was genuinely very good. It played with a lot of really interesting tropes and a lot of really interesting themes and I thought that it did a really good job. It's not one of my top books. I feel like I have to hold back full judgment until I see how some of the, these things are gonna pay off in the sequel, but I will be reading the sequel upon release. Under the Black Flag is one of the nonfiction. I read, I think five, four or five pirate nonfictions this year. Hopefully I got them all on this list. Under the Black Flag was definitely one of the better ones. In fact, it's probably my favorite of all the pirate nonfictions that I read this year. It's just a compilation of historic pirates and what we know about them. 
Coming Back Alive is a rescue nonfiction following a fishing boat that had a, that was caught in a serious storm and the rescue for that. I'm gonna put it at the top of Good Job. I really enjoyed this. Defiant, I loved. This was such a satisfying sequel. Such a satisfying conclusion to the series. I was so nervous about how this would conclude because book one in the Skyward series is my favorite and then it's just continued to go downward. <laughs> so I was so scared, but Defiant is like right up there on par with number one. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my precious. I loved this book. Dark Water Daughter, I really enjoyed. It goes to the top of Good Job. We have a pirate and a naval man? No, no. She's a waterbender, I think. She can control the sea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she can sing and control the sea. And he is, uh, what is he? I think he's a naval man, if I'm not mistaken. She's a storm singer. Her voice can still hurricanes and shatter armads. And he is a disgraced naval officer serving aboard a ship. So we follow their two perspectives. Hers was really interesting and we got a lot of really cool lore through her and through the little snippets in between chapters and his perspective was pretty boring. So I really enjoyed this. I'll definitely read the sequel. It did a very good job. Next we have Weird Sisters. This will probably be around, it'll be in the top of love. This is a Discworld book that uh, follows some, some Shakespeare's plays, which I have not, I'm not, well versed on Shakespeare at all. So I think some of the humor went over my head, but it was still a great time. Then we have Neon Ghost by my pal, Daniel Green. I really enjoyed this book. I'm gonna put it behind Pratchett, but before Dresden. Maybe, be maybe behind Dresden, maybe before Dresden. I'll put it in the middle of Dresden. Cyberpunk, futuristic, all the people because of a fog, because of a mist, uh, all the people are forced to live in this mega structure. And there's vampires that have also been forced to come and live among the humans. And that's kind of rough. It's not going so well socially. And our main character is a detective in training about to uh, get her license, but she has one less job to do before she gets it and it, leads to a larger plot and a lot of problems. The Loving Spirit. Okay, did it let me down or is it a rage? I don't think it's a rage. I'm just gonna, we're gonna say you've done me wrong because this, did, did this book did me wrong because it had so much potential and it chose to do all that it chose to do. If you have uh, seen, whoops, you need to be in front of these. If you've seen uh, my worst books of the year video, then you've seen what it did wrong. I don't think it's a rage. I think, I don't know. I'll think about it. The Soulmate is a thriller. Um, she, let's see, it's a married couple. They have a kid. Yes, there's a cliff and people tend to, that's the cliff that they go to if they want to jump. And he tends to talk people down, like convince them not to jump. Um, but one, instance goes wrong and it kind of looks like maybe he pushed her and then we unravel a whole bunch of hidden secrets. I think this was good. Whoops, not there. Traitor's Blade um, is a fantasy following the, the uh, men who served the king and they were his, they were his, his men who like did his work and kept his law and then the king was killed and they were, their group was disgraced but they still serve the king in spirit. There was great camaraderie there, but there were also some scenes that I question. Uh, we'll put you, you know what? You did me wrong. Sorry about it. You just did. Not as bad as the loving spirit, but you did. Britney Spears, this is a nonfiction. This is her memoir telling her story now that the conservatorship, conservatorship, um, is done. I'm gonna put it behind Coming Back Alive. Okay, now we have Malazan. And Malazan, these books, I read three in 2023, and these books kind of blend together to the point that I'm not all, I'm not 100% sure what happened in each book. I think I'm gonna put, when I did my, when I did my top books of the year list, I just talked about them all together, and I didn't rank them. And I'm not entire, I'm pretty sure Bone Hunters was my favorite of the three. And then I think House of Chains would be next and then Midnight Tides. If I'm remembering the events of what, oops, what am I doing? This is Bone Hunters. If I'm remembering the events of what happened in each book, I believe that's how I would rank those three. Where is, oh, there it is, House of Chains. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's the order that I wanna put them in. 
Uh, next we have Guards Guards. This is easily one of the best books that I read this year. Another Terry Pratchett book, this one specifically following the City Watch, which is a group of people that are meant to keep watch over the city and it's Pratchett, it's nonsense, but it's also got a lot to think about. Yellowface is probably one of the most divisive books <laughs> of the year for booktube as a whole. It seemed like everybody was reading it and people had such different experiences with it. I personally really enjoyed it, but this is also my first RF Kuang book. So the, apparently there was a lot of meta narrative to pull from this and a lot of people speculated that the characters in the book were projections of feedback and criticism that the author herself has gotten in previous publications. I can't speak to any of that because this is my first book of hers. I just thought it was pretty entertaining. If I was a writer who's gotten a really big break and uh, she's been creating a story, but then she dies, chokes on pancake batter and her not really friend, but the person who she, they were acquaintances and they were eating together at the time that it happened and She's also a writer, but she's not found the same success. She witnessed the death and swept the manuscript, published it under her name. And it's drama, it's drama. There's so much drama throughout this book. And I found it quite entertaining and also with some things to think about. Oh, not, not there though. Let's, let's put you back here. Don Quixote was incredible. I absolutely loved this classic. It was long. It took me like a month to read it. I loved it. I was reading other stuff along with it. If a Pirate I Must Be is another pirate nonfiction, this one specifically following Barth Bartholomew Roberts. I really enjoyed this. I'll put it before this. I'll put it, yeah. Republic of Pirates was another. It was very similar to Under the Black Flag, another compilation of many pirates. I'll put it behind If a Pirate I Must Be. Under the Black Flag was the best pirate nonfiction I read this year. The Deep was a novella following mermaids. So you'd think I would love it. And it's this one mermaid that holds the memories of all the mer mermaids. She holds their history. And once a year she helps them remember. It's very The Giver, if you've ever read the book, The Giver. Very similar to The Giver uh, with more emphasis on the burden that she's carrying of their history, as well as how important community is for um, being able to work through that trauma that history brings. It's specifically focused on black history. And I really enjoyed this, but it, I just wanted more pages. I don't think that this should have been a novella. I think this needed more to explore the characters more and to just, I mean, I think it got plenty deep with how many pages it had, but I just, I wanted more pages. And I just realized that you've done me wrong. Everything else, I'm ordering it correctly, but you've done me wrong, I've been ordering dyslexically. So next is Wild Swans. This is another nonfiction specifically following three generations of women who lived in China. One before the Chinese revolution happened, the cultural revolution happened, one um, during and right before, and then the third generation was in the thick of the cultural revolution and she even was a part of it um, for a bit. They were able to escape China and this is their story. Um, I loved this book. I I think it, I think it made my top books of the year. I loved this book. I'll put it right there. No, probably right, yeah, right there. Kisses and Croissants! This made my worst books of the year video and in fact was the reason I did it. I wasn't even planning on making a worst books of the year video, but Kisses and Croissants, I needed to talk about. And it got a little bit of rage out of me. Happy Place, I also <laughs> really just didn't like I am a fan of Christina Henry. Is that the author's name? Emily Henry. I'm a fan of Emily Henry. I have read two of her books and liked, but I didn't like The Happy Place, so that sucks. Grown follows a young girl who is trying to make it into, make it in the music industry and it kind of focuses on how horrible the music industry can be to young girls and how taken advantage, some people in Hollywood in general are. This actually followed a specific case. I don't remember, let me look it up. Okay, so this is this is inspired by R. Kelly's case. Um, I loved this book. I thought it was fantastic. Stoner is a literary fiction classic about a professor who falls in love with teaching and with literature and 
tries to create a life for himself and uh, some things work out well and some things don't. I had a, I got to be a part of a really awesome discussion with uh, Jimmy, Allen, Philip, and Joanna um, on Allen's channel and I loved this book, I think as much for the conversation that it brought as I did for the book itself, love. The Way We Dance, another book written by a good friend of mine, Philip Chase. I read books one and two this year and I'm gonna be reading book three, hopefully in the first quarter of 2024. We follow Day Raven, who is a farm boy going on his fantasy quest, his chosen one quest. We also have Saquara, which introduces us a lot to the magic and a lot of the themes in the story, as well as a few other perspectives, some of the antagonistic group as well. This was very classic fantasy with its own bent and it was very, very charming and I, whoops, enjoyed it very much. And the sequel, Prophet of Edan, I actually, I think most people that I've seen talk about these books liked Prophet even better than Way of Edan, but Way of Edan had such a charming start. It does, it does go higher than Prophet for me, but I am very excited for the conclusion and to see how Philip wraps it all up. Next we have His Majesty's Dragon. If I did awards this year, which I'm, if I did awards in 2023, which I'm gonna do in 2024, this would have been on my, one of, one of the biggest surprises of the year. This is a book that I've put off reading for years because I hated, um, Uprooted. I hated Uprooted so aggressively that I didn't want to touch any more of her books, but His Majesty's Dragon always looked like something that I would like. It's a naval man who acquires a dragon's egg and becomes the dragon's rider and has to give up his life in the Navy to become a, to, to serve in the military, in the Napoleonic Wars as a dragon rider with other dragon riders. It just sounds like my book, but it was Naomi Novik. I loved it, it was it was one of the best. Did it make it onto my favorites of the year list? I don't actually remember, but it's there now. I'm reading book two in January. I think I'm starting it actually next week. The Three Body Problem, one of my favorites of the year. First Contact, Everything Goes Wrong. That's a good description of it. Um, the Dark Forest was, I think, I think I liked The Dark Forest more than Three Body, though they are very close. I think that's kind of an unpopular opinion. I think most people like Dark Forest better. And then Death's End, they're all like pretty much level for me. Yay! Okay, next is the Dandelion Dynasty. I don't exactly know how I would rank. Um, next week I'm doing my favorite series. My I'm updating my favorite series list. So this isn't complete because I haven't sat down and agonized over exactly how I would rank my favorite series. Um, so I don't know. I'm just throwing stuff on the board right now. Um, but anyway, Speaking Bones, Veiled Throne, and Wall of Storms. Those are the ones that I read this year. And last year I read The Way of Kings. No, <laughs> I read The Grace of Kings, which is book one in the Dandelion Dynasty. And Wall of Storms, easily my favorite. And then How I'd Break the Rest of Them. Hmm. Uh, Wall of Storms, Speaking Bones, Grace of Kings, Veiled Throne. I think is how I'd rank those. But again, they're all pretty much level, except Wall of Storms is definitely top. I'm Glad My Mom Died by, Je by Jeanette McCurdy. This is another nonfiction celebrity memoir. Uh, she talks about her acting experience as well as her at home experience and the abuse <laughs> that she had and observed, again, in Hollywood as well as at home. Um, I would put it right about here, maybe a little bit higher. I might put it I might put it up here. City of Last Chances is another book that was quite the surprise for me and it's actually the one that encouraged me to read more. Adrian Tchaikovsky, people always don't like how I say that. Um, this book follows a city under occupation that is on the brink of, of revol revolution and what's going to be the spark to ignite it. There's a lot going on in this book. There's a ton of perspectives. It's a very interesting city. Um, the first half of the book, I was really not sold on it, but the second half was so fantastic that I will be reading the companion the moment it drops this year. I loved this book. I'm actually gonna put it right there, I think. The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi. This is a pirate adventure following a woman in her 40s who was the pirate queen. She was the best of the best and now she's uh, out of the game, but she's getting back into the game and people loved this book. I enjoyed this book, but I didn't love it 
like the rest of booktube did. So um, right there, feels right. Island of the Lost, another nonfiction. This one following two shipwrecks that happened on opposite sides of the island with very opposite um, groups of people and their survival was also opposite in how it all transpired. One banded together and did some really cool, like were able to survive really well. And the other didn't. It's really interesting because without these two ships knowing it, they at the same time in history had a shipwreck under very similar circumstances and had totally different outcomes because of leadership and because of the way that they chose to respond to it. So it is an interesting study. Lots of seals. <laughs> there was some filler in here. There's a lot of padding. Uh, I will put it here. No, I'm gonna put it behind if a pirate I must be. Hollow Kingdom, unfortunately, I, it, unfortunately, I didn't really like it. There's an apocalypse happening and we're following multiple animals during the apocalypse. And it was a weird book. It was really weird. And I didn't like it that much. I'm so sorry, Sloth, the person who recommended it to me. And Frosty, who, recommended it more aggressively. I read the Shattered Sea Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, one of my all-time favorite authors. And these were awesome. I mean, they could have easily made the honorable mention. Abercrombie just writes good books. I don't care. His YA series is not nearly as popular. I'm gonna actually put this one down here. Here we go. His YA series is not nearly as popular, but uh, it deserves a little bit more love than I think it gets. It was very good. Bookshops and Bone Dust, this is the prequel to Legends and Lattes. Legends and Lattes was a booming success. Everybody was talking about this cozy fantasy. And then uh, Bookshops and Bone Dust happened and it's the prequel, it's Viv's story before. It's a prequel, you understand what that means. And I felt that this was enjoyable and it was charming and I had a good time reading it, but it also felt pretty unnecessary. I don't feel like I gained anything from seeing Viv at a different point in her life. I don't think I was nearly as attached to the romance or the characters or anything that was going on because, you know, I knew we were passing by. And I don't, I just don't feel like it, I, it, it felt enjoyable, but not necessary. So I enjoyed you. You did a good job. Congratulations, moving on. A Wizard's Handbook, this book was not bad, but I didn't personally like it. This is one of the secret projects. The main character ends up in an alternate medieval e England and has to follow a guidebook to help him figure out what's going on. Never Caught is another nonfiction. This follows the one of the slaves of George Washington. It follows her life and her service under him. You're not supposed to die tonight. So funny little story <laughs> to go along with this. this. This is a thriller, it's a YA thriller. And it, so it's uh, the main character, she works at uh, at a survival experience. I don't remember what it's called, but over the summer they put on um, a, a night of horror where the, char the people pay to live out a horror experience and they kind of take them through um, a killer is in the woods trying to find them. And it goes wrong when there's a real killer. So there was one scene <laughs> that was particularly grotesque. Like there was someone, she was holding her insides in, there was someone in the woods still, and they were all aware that, you know, he could show up and start, he just did that to this girl. He could start doing this all up. So it was a very high intensity, gory scene. And I was on the edge of my seat reading it late at night, the last one awake in my house. <laughs> on the couch and I've convinced myself that there's someone living in my basement. I have no evidence for this. I just, in the back of my mind, I'm just aware there's probably someone living down here, which by the way, I'm filming in my basement. There's probably someone living down here and they're just really good at hiding it. And myself and this fictional person, we've just come to an agreement that as long as this person stays away from the uh, upstairs, then you know, you live there happily, just continue to make sure that I don't see you. So I was sitting on my couch late at night, the last one awake, reading this really grotesque scene and some rustling started happening in the room, in the next room. And in my mind, I'm like, I haven't locked the basement door yet. This person has finally broken the agreement and they're finally upstairs and they're gonna kill me. And I'll spare you the entire mental spiral that I went through over the course of like the minute that I sat there listening to the ongoing rustling that was actively happening. Like, I didn't imagine it, it kept happening in the next room. But the conclusion to the story was that my cat was in the cabinet, just kind of 
messing around being a cat. Um, anyway, I hated the ending of this book. It would have easily been a four star book, but the ending really made me mad. So you're gonna be way back here. Okay, so we have The Warrior's Apprentice and The Vorder Games, I think they're called. I really enjoyed both of these. I'm gonna put them right there. This is my first experience with this author. I'm definitely gonna be reading more of hers. Jimmy is wanting to start reading her books, so I'll probably just wait to, to see what he decides to start with, and I'll just match whatever he's reading so we can talk about it. So I will be reading more of her books, but I'm just gonna let Jimmy dictate my reading on that one. Before the Coffee Gets Cold, this um, is about a coffee shop where there's a specific table that you can sit at, that a ghost sits at, and once a day she gets up and goes to the bathroom, and then you can snatch her chair, and then that'll allow you to go back to any point in time and have one last cup of coffee with a person of your choosing, but you only have the amount of time until the, your cup of coffee goes cold. And it's four separate stories that end up being connected. Um, and I liked this. Into the Planet, a nonfiction following a cave diver. Her story of becoming a cave diver, the team that she's with, the um, exploits that she's been on, I very much enjoyed this. Lies of Locke Lamora, this is one of my all time favorite books. If not, it's one of my all time favorite books, if not my all time favorite book. I reread Alice's Adventures in Wonderland this year and I love these books. Serial Cortex is a sci-fi. They invent a device that allows you to go inside the person's mind and potentially help them overcome fears, but then they bring in, illegally, bring in a convict, a person who's been accused of murder and they're trying to go inside her mind and prove that she did it, I think was it and it did a good job. I enjoyed this book. The Trouble with Peace. This is the, um, I read the last two books in the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie and these are now my favorite Joe Abercrombie books and he's one of my favorite authors. Again, don't pay too much attention to the order of this top row. I will do, oh, did I read Grace of Kings this year? I don't think I did. I think I'm lying with that. I will next week do the favorite series list and then you'll see my actual um, ranking, but this is my new favorite Abercrombie series. I adore these books so much. Equal Rights is another Pratchett book. I loved this, Following Witches again. Sorcery uh, was fine. I didn't have a lot to say about Sorcery. It's another it's another Discworld book, but not my favorite. Pyramids, also not my favorite. Mort, I really, really enjoyed Mort. That's another Pratchett, that's another um, Discworld book. And then we have Men at Arms, which is the sequel to Guards Guards. That's another Discworld. I loved that one. And Feet of Clay. I also absolutely loved, I think, I don't remember what order I would put them in, so I'm just gonna leave them one, two, three for the city watch. Annihilation is a sci-fi horror following a abandoned town with an abandoned lighthouse and a tunnel or a tower that's sunken in. And there are expeditions that come and explore, but like weird things are happening to the people that go in this space and I loved this book so doggone much. Um, I'm kind of disappointed that I'm that I'm redoing my favorite series list at, in January, which is when I always do it. I always update it in January, but I have a feeling that this book could be this trilogy when I finish it in February or March. Um, it could it could be the list, but that, that'll mean that it'll have to be in the next update. Uh, the Goblin Emperor, a goblin, he's half goblin, half elf, I think it was. But because he's half, he's not, he's royalty technically. He's supposed to be in line to be emperor, but he's kind of discarded because of his half status. Uh, but then everybody dies, so he has to be emperor. It was fine. Inheritance at the, I last year I reread the Inheritance cycle, Aragon, um, and then this one I finished in January of this year and I enjoyed it. It wasn't the best conclusion ever, but I did like it. The Fisherman, I didn't like. Again, sorry, sloth. Night of the Mannequins is a Stephen Graham Jones novella. This is the book that solidified that Stephen Graham Jones is an author that I'm gonna keep following. It's weird and it has bad ratings, but I love it. Lone Women was fine. It had an amazing start following a lone woman who is traveling with her trunk, her mysterious trunk that she wouldn't tell anybody what was inside. And then she settles on a plot of land and, uh, oh man, excellent, excellent mystery and suspense, but I didn't feel like the reveals really paid off super well. Red as the Sea, Deep as the Sky is a pirate fiction following, it's a historical retelling of the Pirate Queen Chigji, who is 
one of my favorite historic pirates. And I, I loved this book. I loved it so much. Bone Shard War is the conclusion conclusion to, oh, it's over here, to the uh, Bone Shard uh, trilogy. Probably my least favorite of the three, but still really enjoyed it. Maybe here, it might be, it might be right there. House with Good Bones is a uh, gothic book, but gothic suspense I might categorize it as. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. The Nightmare Man was a horror that I didn't really enjoy. The Woman They Could Not Silence is a nonfiction following a woman who um, speaks out and then her father, and not for her husband, even worse, uh, sends her off to an insane, insane asylum. And the treatment in that is insane asylum is, it's, I mean, it's horrifying, it's terrible. It's a really difficult book to read, but Elizabeth is an unbelievably strong woman. The Shadow Casket is the sequel to The Ember Blade. The Ember Blade, I love so much. And the Shadow Casket, I really, really enjoyed, but it did feel very much like a middle book. So I expect it'll probably be my least favorite in the trilogy when book three does come out. The Sunlit Man, I really enjoyed. It was of the secret, of the four secret projects, it was number three for me. Arm of the Sphinx was the sequel to Sinlin Ascends. I loved Sinlin Ascends. I enjoyed Arm of the Sphinx. Um, and then I DNF'd book three. Yumi and the Nightmare Pain Painter is number two uh, for me of the secret projects. I loved this book. Warrior Girl Unearthed follows, this is a YA book. It follows a girl who, gosh, there was so much going on in this book. How do I summarize it quickly? There's a series of murders going on, but also um, stolen artifacts. I think it's specifically from their reservation or it might be other reservations as well, but like their ancestors, stuff has been taken. And so it's her, it starts off with her needing to get a job because of a car accident that she was in. So she needs to get a job to pay off that stuff, but then that leads her to seeing these stolen uh, artifacts and wanting to fight to get them back as well as wanting justice for some of the um, sexual assaults that are happening. And so it's her, a teenager, and her it's her who is a teenager and her friends fighting for justice when uh, the system is letting them down. I loved this book. Probably put it there. Maybe there. Um, okay, so I read, I, I watched Master and Commander and I really enjoyed it. So I started reading the books and um, the first book I believe is called Master and Commander. And then I remember what the second book is called. They'll be on the screen. Um, I really enjoyed both of these quite a bit but I haven't had the motivation to read book three yet. So if you love the series, motivate me, please. Sissa Samurai is following a samurai who is older and her group that she uh, used to work with, fight with, um, are gone. And I won't tell you anything more than that, but it talks about her grief and her, um, what's been left behind, but then also there's weird things going on in this world. I was gonna go get the book, but it'll be on the screen. Um, weird things that are going on in this world. And she's like, I'm not trying to mess with that. I'm not trying to be a defender. I'm not trying to help people right now. I just wanna eat my uh, ramen. I think she was having ramen. I think she was at a ramen shop when everything started. I just wanna eat my ramen and I wanna go home. But um, she gets involved. It's so short and it's so good. So much emotion and action are packed into these pages. I loved this book. Blood Over Bright Haven made it into my top of the year list. Dark Academia, I loved this book. I thought it was excellent. Uh, Bookshops and Barbarian, this is like Legends and Lattes-esque, uh, very short, um, hmm, I think someone comes into town and buys a bookshop and is trying to fix it up and then she hires a murder hobo to help and you know, Legends and Lattes-esque escapades in Sue. I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna put it here, probably. Gods of Jade and Shadow. I didn't really like this. I, I did like it. I'm gonna put it at the end of Good Job. I didn't love it. Wizard of Earth C2 was just a good job and I'm sorry, I know that bums people out that I feel that way, but I liked it. I didn't love it. I didn't grow up reading it and I just didn't connect with it like so many people do. Dawn, this is, the earth is ruined and there are some aliens that have collected the last humans, the last surviving humans, and they're helping in their own way. And this is a sci-fi horror and it's disturbing. It's so disturbing, but Butler 
can get you hooked and make you feel. I loved this book. I did start the sequel and quit because it was too much, but book one, gosh, I loved it so much. Flowers for Algernon. This is my first time reading this classic and I thought that this book was excellent. We had some really great discussions out of it. Very challenging to read. Wasn't It wasn't an easy or a fun read, but very good book. Uh, the Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sloth. Uh, this is another recommendation from a patron who I very much like, but I don't, we don't seem to like the same books. I didn't like this book. Actually, let's stick it in good job because I did, I did think that it was fine. It by Stephen King. Um, I thought that the first half of this book was a masterpiece. The second half will drug on desperately needed condensing. And then the ending was just a cluster cuss. So I think I would put it at the end of love. If I add all that together, incredible, amazing, darn near perfect first half. Second half that was good, not great. Ending that was bad. Something Wicked This Way Comes, I adore this book. Wow, these are not, again, please don't judge my precious shelf. I'm just throwing things up there at this point. Um, just, just, just ignore it. The Eye of Argon is such a hard one for me to figure out how to put on a tier list because it, it is in my worst books of the year video because it is one of the worst bo written books that I've read, but it was also one of my favorite reads of the year. So I, you know, you naturally rate things according to what you think because different readers have different experiences. So do I rate, do I rank it according to how much fun I had reading it or do I rank it according? I'm just gonna split the difference and I'm just gonna stick it right there. Why not? <laughs> Phantom of the Opera was excellent. The Wager made it onto my honorable mentions. I loved this book. Uh, Folk Tales from the Hills of Puerto Rico. I really, really enjoyed this book as well. It's just a bunch of fables, and but I read it while I was in Puerto Rico. I love this book. And the final book that I finished this year was my reread of The Republic of Thieves, which again, The Gentleman Bastards is my favorite series. So what are you gonna do? It's gonna be at the top. There you go. That is an obscenely long video tier ranking every book that I read in the year 2023. Hopefully this entertained you somehow. Hopefully you enjoyed getting a quick look at kind of what my reading year was like, what I enjoyed, what didn't work for me. And again, if there's anything that you saw on this video that you're like, hmm, I'd like more thoughts on that, check out the spreadsheet. There are videos galore linked so you can, you can have more. I'm done talking. Chat with me about this in the comments if you want to. Any books that you disagree with me on, you can tell me what your ranking for them would be. And while you're checking out the spreadsheet in the description, don't forget to che check out Wraithmarked. This edition is stunning. So if you like Shades of Magic or you know someone who does, this is a great opportunity to get a gorgeous edition of it. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the manga channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.